Hey guys, it's Dennis here with Revog Games, and this is our weekly games podcast. I'm joined by Joshua Vayers, all the way in South Africa. Yes, and a lot of news. Uh, you know, the last few weeks maybe a little bit uh, slow on news. Uh, this week, or this past week, I would say a lot of big stuff going on. Um, uh, all right, let's start off with this one. So this is something actually someone in, in the discord had, had mentioned like you guys called it and I was like, I think I think jo- Josh you had called this because I had called yeah. the God I had called the God of War one delay uh, but I actually genuinely didn't think the horizon forbidden West would actually get delayed just because I figured okay, leave one big triple A title also, game we've seen gameplay of it you know? exactly you recently think. recently too uh. Just a couple months ago, they, they they did this whole launch, and it looked like, okay, everything's on track. We'll get this big AAA title exclusive for the PS5, and then, um, you know, I think it's for PS4 as well, right? But, I mean, you know what I mean. Like, it's, it's yeah. Sony exclusive. And when they delayed God of War Ragnarok, that made sense. Like, we hadn't seen anything. We hadn't heard anything. It was just... There's no way it would have come out this year, but I was feeling good about Horizon for Baron West. Um, so but was yeah, I. so the like, rumors, genuinely. yeah, the rumors uh, are coming out that it is going to be delayed to quarter one of 2022. Um, what are your thoughts on this news? Are you bumped? That's an L, man. That's a that's a big <laughs> L for Sony. It's a big L for PlayStation. Yeah. Like, th- what games are there to play on the PS5? You know, <laughs> like how far are we into this this console generation? Look, it is still the new generation, you know, granted. And we have had COVID and a lot of things that have like, you know, slowed down um, the growth of this generation's consoles. But like, what the hell, man? Like, it look, to be fair, it's not confirmed. These are rumors, right? You know? Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, it just seems but they're, that it, but they're, it seems like it's most likely. Yeah, it seems true. like these rumors are... Um, true yeah, yeah they're coming from good sources it sucks because look i think it it would have been good to have them sell this for um for winter you know mm-hmm. like right before uh right like like around christmas time around that i think they could have boosted their sales uh i don't think people are going to be too bothered by this like people are going to be sad but they're not going to be upset you know mm-hmm. like it just doesn't seem like the, the 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 type of fan base that would be like most fan bases would be They'd be fuming. They'd be upset. They'd be like, "How dare they delay the game? Mm-hmm. The game after this and that." But I think people who have played the original Horizon, I don't know. It's a. It might be a bit of a reach to say, but I just don't think they'll be that. They'll be sad, but I don't think they're going to be angry. You know, mm-hmm. I think I think people are mainly going to be sad by this news. They're not going to be angry. It sucks for me, but not too much because I don't have a PS5. You know, and I would only play this game on a PS5. Mm-hmm. Either that or like I already know I'm going to wait a year or two until I get to play it on PC. You know, like, so I'm not, I'm particularly not that phased by it. But if I owned a PS5, Dennis, Mm -hmm. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty salty. You know, I wouldn't be upset, but I'd be pretty salty, man. Mm -hmm. Like, like, what, what, what am I really playing here? Like, the the most, like, high tech next gen thing that I, that I've played, hypothetically speaking, is Ratchet and Clank. You know, (laughs) like, that, that, that's, that's like the most next gen experience I've had on the PS5. If I owned if I owned a PS5, you know, besides the load times that you saw in Spider Man, which is still impressive, yes. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know, man. It's limited. Like if the if the amount of games you can enjoy in your PS5 to get that next gen experience are less than five, or less than three, even I don't I don't know. So yeah, if I had a PS5, I'd be pretty upset about this because it's a good game, you know. I have a friend who has a PS5 Uh who saved up like a whole year to get one. It was like his goal, his ultimate goal in life, uh, like was to get that PS5 and he got it. I was so happy for him. Although the, like the face he pulled afterwards when he was like, now what? I was like, I don't know, man, (laughs) you, you, you're gonna have to set another goal now, you know, and achieve that. Good for you. But he's probably going to be upset about this. I think anybody who owns a PS5 is going to be upset. If you don't own a PS5 already, you're not going to really care about this. It sucks. I hope it's one of those things where they're taking their time to polish it because from what yeah. we saw, from what we saw, game looked pretty damn good. Yeah. It doesn't look doesn't look like it needs polishing, but to be fair, they're only showing us certain parts, only showing us certain areas, you know. So who knows? Um I highly doubt it's anything to do with story related. Obviously the story must be hashed out and pr- mm-hmm. like they probably had the story hashed out when they fre- when they murdered the fir- when they made the first game, you know. Um I I think it's just going to be polishing and 
to be fair, it's not that big of a delay, you know? I mean, yes, when you say 2022, that sounds like a hell of a delay, but 2022 is not that far away, especially Q1, you know? Yeah. Um, we're already we're already at pretty much within like uh, th- like we're in the, we're, we're third we're the third we're, we're like a third through the year already you know yeah the we're and out, we're yeah. towards the end of Q3 I mean as soon as yeah. the August game would have come out over. like Q4 most likely game would have come out Q4 of this year so they're delaying it to Q1 of tw- so if anything it's probably like a, a four like a four or five month delay I don't know the exact numbers I don't think it's that it sucks like i said it sucks but it's not the end of the world you know it's not like a company that went around promising people uh that you know they, they didn't make like heavy promises in the first place that's all i'm gonna say you know so mm-hmm. it's and it's not like it's the first it's not like it's the fifth delay or something you know okay um, so if i take the delay of the actual game i don't think it's that big a deal uh you know games get delayed all the time you know, they're probably for quality reasons. We've seen, you know, games released too early, like Cyberpunk 2077 and others, even though that was much a uh, long process. Um, but so a- as far as just the game itself being delayed, it's not that big a deal because it's probably yeah. going to be better quality. You're going to get a better experience, etc. I think for Sony and PS5, I think it's an issue. I think I think it's an L. It's an L, Dennis. It's a it's it's a loss. I, and I also think they are switching positions to what Xbox and with the Xbox Series X had last year. Remember, Halo Infinite was supposed to come out at the launch of the mm. Xbox Series X, and that actually would have get, given them an even bigger exclusive title um, compared say, to Halo Sony. Was supposed to come out like a year ago, almost. That's crazy to think yeah. how long it's been. I mean, it was supposed it's, to come out supposed to come out during the launch, like November. So yeah. So now they swap places because now Sony doesn't have their big AAA title. Uh, they were going to have two. We knew that God of War was not going to be one of them, even though yeah. they said it was. Well, we're, there's rumors going around now. Like I said earlier before this, there's rumors going around that God of War might also get delayed again. You yeah. know, I mean, like I said, on their own, it's not an issue. It's that you, the timing and then the lack of something else to replace it. So now you have... Halo Infinite, which was delayed a year, now coming out this year, uh, which we're going to actually, our next big topic is about Halo Infinite, is coming out this year. And now this is their, you know, flagship AAA exclusive title. Yes, I know it's PC, but I'm talking about Xbox slash PC family. Um, And so now I feel like Xbox is going to get that momentum from that, uh, especially being on Game Pass as well. Um, which also we're going to talk about uh, in a few well, topics. Xbox has been gaining. Xbox has been gain, gaining momentum in general. I wouldn't say that they that they've given Xbox the lead. It's more no, like no, there's a no. ra- It's more like there's a race going on, and Sony's just not running. You know, that's it's more like that. It's 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 like they're, they're you know what they're doing. They're letting it. Xbox catch up. Sony yeah. was in the lead unintentionally by a good margin. <laughs> And then, because remember, what was it? Uh, was it June? I, I forget. Whenever they had the the Xbox showcase at E3, it was June, right? That's when their so, yeah. their their sales actually like were uh, money wise was number one for that month. Yeah. Um. The, okay. So another thing that maybe makes it not as bad is that we are having shortages of both um PS five and in yes both yeah. consoles. So let's say hypothetically, you know, PlayStation doesn't look so good. Look, doesn't look as, you know, promising, at least for this this uh, winter. If Xbox doesn't have the consoles to sell, then they're not going to be able to take advantage of this kind of slip up by Sony. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not going to be able to sell what they need to sell to catch up because everyone's it's all sold out. So you're going to, well, they'll get, they'll get more subscribers. Yeah. They'll get more game pass subscribers. Sure. But I mean, that's of existing customers, you know, you, in order to expand that base, you need to get, you know, more, you know, more consoles sold. Um, Mm. But it does help in the perception though. Right. It helps in the perception of, okay, wow. Xbox has, you know, Halo Infinite coming out, uh, you know, and then, you know, there's a lot of smaller games that we've talked about um, for Game Pass that, that that's coming out. 
as well. So I don't know. I just think this is. I mean, H Hades is around the corner. I'm excited for you to play that. Yeah, like I any, mean, any day now it's going to be dropping. To be honest, like you know, these isometric kind of games. You know, I obviously I played them when I was young. I'm talking about like I used to play them. You know, on the uh the sega genesis sega genesis um whatchamacallit uh the original xbox there was a game called the uh, reckoning that was actually very similar gameplay style to the ascent but anyways now hades is you know was game of the year last year so i can now check it out and i have to tell you to be honest the scent has made me more excited for Hades. something like hades even though obviously yeah. hades came out first and had more hype it's just i just wasn't into the isometric uh style of gameplay at least lately and so we'll talk about the scent in in a little bit but just yeah in general i just feel so how bad do you think this hurts them sony this, this delay look it's good <laughs> it's gonna it's not like they're losing money it's just that they're not making the money that what they, they could want, have been yeah. making you know which i guess yes is you could say that that's losing money in a sense you know they're, they're still gonna make the uh, money. in a corporate way think... that is have you ever read yeah, reports I... of corporates like oh you didn't make as much money as you had wanted to make that's losing money uh, that's yeah. losing <laughs> and then your stock goes down you made 500 million dollars this quarter but you said you were gonna make 600 stock price down you know like that's just yeah. the corporate mentality Look, people, people are still gonna buy the game people are when yes. this game comes out people are still gonna buy it when ragnarok comes out people are still gonna buy it the issue is and yeah like you said as well maybe it gives them the chance to like catch up on getting actual playstations out you know actual hardware out there because there is a shortage and people are, are struggling to get so it gives them that time to catch up. I think that they're going to, I think that they're hurting from, the, here's the biggest hurt is I think that they're going to genuinely lose customers over this. Hmm. Not because it's people are like, ah, oh, damn you, Sony. I don't want any part of this. And they're going to leave. They're just going to leave out of boredom. Hmm. You know, it's one of those things like when Netflix loses subscribers, it's because they, they're bored, you know, yeah. and Sony's going to lose customers because they're bored. Because what else can they do? Like there's really not much that they can be doing on that, on that new system, you know? Except for play Returnal for like the fifth hundredth time, and unless you unless you love roguelites like me, you're not going to be playing Returnal for the five hundredth time. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. Here's and he, like I said, people aren't going to be upset about it because of one reason and one reason only. We've seen gameplay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of the time when we hear about delays, we haven't even seen what the product looks like, and people are like delays, and we're like ah, and we get angry because we didn't even know what the hell they're working on. But with this, we've seen a good amount of gameplay. I don't think anyone cares about the, like the delay short. I don't think Sony's going to lose. I don't think they're going to lose money on this. I think they're going to lose customers, which once again, like you said, in corporate talk would be losing money anyways. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's like not future it's money. Be, exactly. Future money. And I don't think it's people leaving out of spite. I think it's people leaving out of boredom, you know? Yeah. Well, th like, there's a term in, in the, you know, that's come up lately <laughs> about, uh, the, you know, all the, and I'll relate this back to games in the whole streaming world with Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime. And it's called the churn. And the churn is basically having enough content consistently so that people, like you said, don't get bored and so are willing to put keep their subscriptions going and pay that money, right? So as soon as yeah. you're not churning enough content, good content that people want to see, that's when they stop. They go, okay, well, you don't have X, Y, and Z. I'll, I'll stop my subscription. Maybe I'll resubscribe later, or maybe I won't. And so this is kind of what is fueling um, a lot of these streaming services, which you know ultimately there's not going to be that many in probably five five years. Um, yeah, they're all going to um, be tied together, kind of thing. So uh, in the gaming yeah. world, this is the same thing. Um, it's different because you know obviously games or whatever, but you have something like Game Pass, right? You're going to have that churn. Of, of all these games and, and Microsoft so far has been doing a good job and they're going to actually be doing a much better job once they start getting all those like Outer Worlds 2 and uh, Avowed and Starfield. Once they get their, their heavy hitters starting to come out every few months, you, you're never going to unsubscribe from Game Pass. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So they're getting their churn going. And PlayStation or Sony has their own churn, but it's different because it's not subscription. Well, it hasn't started yet yeah. either. Like if you think about it, they've a lot of the big investments and the and the big acquisitions they've made, they're not going to be seeing the fruits of that labor for at least another like yeah. year. Another year is being optimistic, you know. Another year, maybe two years, you know. What if, whatever deal that they have going with Epic that they're planning, whatever like they're bringing their games to PC. Mm -hmm. um, 
And there's that deal. We spoke about it a while ago about a streaming service that might, well, Netflix partnering with Sony. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that, well, that's something that we're only going to see further on because we know that they're going to focus on mobile games mm -hmm. at first. Uh, just most likely just have access to the PlayStation controller. I don't know. The The thing is, like, Netflix, uh, Sony hasn't been sitting around and doing nothing. They've been making deals. It's just those deals aren't going to pay off for quite a while. And this, like, just having this, like, like the the fourth quarter and like the the first quarter of 2022 be dry mm -hmm. that i think that's like that's gonna hurt them yeah they're they'll make their money back but i think they're gonna be down bad for like a while after this you know yeah even when yeah. they do make their money they're gonna be behind you know even yeah that's a microsoft when you're talking and loving it they're gonna be behind you're talking about microsoft as well now they're finally seeing the dividends pay off in, exactly. especially last From, year next yeah. year sorry next year once uh starfield comes out uh uh, at the end uh, of next year, then you're going to start seeing that their investments, Perfect Dark, um, you know, Avowed, Outer Worlds 2, all those things will start coming in. So like you said, Sony kind of got a late start, even though they already had their kind of in-house, you know, they already had that stuff with, you know, Naughty Dog and uh, mm. all their games and then Ghost of Tsushima and all that good stuff. It's not that Sony doesn't have these awesome exclusives. It's just right now they're kind of in a lull and it's gonna hurt them yeah. um, i mean look it, it like while we're on the topic they do have playstation now which is a catalog of like i could be well i guess yeah no i was gonna say something that could have been wrong but uh, at a certain point in time it did have a much bigger catalog than game pass you know we're talking like thousands of games yeah. were on uh, playstation now but it was something that was at the, at the time overpriced you know, because it had no competitors, there was no uh, mm -hmm. Game Pass. Like, uh, as far as like this was a while ago. That's when PlayStation Now was twenty dollars a month, which is crazy, by the way. Uh, yeah. But you could stream the games, and you still can. Like, you can play PlayStation Now right now on your PC, and you can stream all your favorite PS2, PS3, and some PS4 games at obviously a much lower resolution because you're streaming them. But it's like they have these games, they have this catalog. The reason why they're behind is because they're just not marketing it nearly as well as as Xbox. And they don't have the new exclusives on it. It's like, yeah, you can play thousands of games that came out 10 years mm -hmm. ago, but but Xbox is, Game Pass has got stuff that just came out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. It's uh, like, I feel, I feel like they're they're doing their best, but they need someone to like steer them the right way in terms of this whole live action, mm -hmm. well, sorry, live service kind of uh, streaming thing that they're trying to do. Well, here's a topic that I actually want to kind of, we were going to talk about later, but it just fits in too nicely with what we're talking about now, which is this, uh, with, the the former Sony president, Sean Landon, uh, he had an interview with a uh, game industries dot biz and he kind of talked, uh, he kind of poo pooed the idea of game pass in general. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's, it's not good. I mean, he is the former Sony president. So, you know, you got to take, take it for what it is but he says okay people don't buy consoles because they want more steel and plastic in their living room people buy consoles because they want access to the content if you can find a way to get the content into people's homes without a box then yes of course everyone has a streaming solution in some way many are limited by the power of the internet connection and they haven't built a business model that works in that sense yet it is very difficult to launch a 120 million dollar game on a subscription service that charges 9.99 month if you do the math, you should have 500 million subscribers before you re start recouping your investment. And it is for this reason that it is now necessary to take a leader position with l less loss to grow ba a base. But anyway, if there are $250 million million consoles out there, you can never have half a billion subscribers. So how do you make your ends meet? No one has figured it out yet. So I do think that's a huge exaggeration i mean i understand his point of uh, i think that's coming from an independent studio like if you are like if you if if it's a, if it's if it's a game coming from microsoft of course they're gonna make their money if it's a game coming from sony and it's on playstation now of course they're gonna make their money you know what i mean but if cd project red does a deal with like game pass no it's not gonna be worth their money you know mm -hmm. but it's worth it if it's microoft mm -hmm. you know it's like his yeah his argument is well his math is reasons, it, it, yeah. it's funny because he says if you do the math it's like i did the math it doesn't work like if you had 500 million work. subscribers uh you'd be making billions and billions of dollars of course it'd be worth it uh even right now if you look at the 
just l- let's let's put this uh this theory to test okay he's talking about a 120 million dollar game look i don't know what the licensing costs for these other third party games are they're probably not mm. that expensive but let's say microsoft's goal is to have six let's say six 120 dollar games i don't know the number the budgets and the numbers but let's say six so that's once every two months right that's uh six times 12 times 120 million dollars so a year you're talking uh 8.6 uh billion dollars okay that that's a yeah. lot of money that's a lot of money 8.6 billion lot of moolah. okay but then you're taking right now i think there's 18 million subscribers uh on uh xbox game pass and you multiply that by 12 months a year that's 216 times $10 that's 2.6 billion. So that is definitely a loss, right? But that's only, you know, with we're 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 assuming there's like 6 120 million dollar per month and we're talking about 18 million subscribers which ultimately their goal is not to be, you know, 18 million. They're obviously losing money right now, but it's not like as far off as he says cuz his math is okay, if you're 500 million subscribers times let's say $10 a month times 12 months a year that's 60 billion dollars so he's exaggerating it by quite a bit <laughs> like Th- here's, that's that's here's the thing as well what, what he's forgetting about this and like well look anybody with any like form of logic realizes that this is the way to go forward because i'm gonna say a couple things now that might i wouldn't they're not gonna upset people but everybody knows this right <clears throat> any subscription service whether it's streaming games streaming movies anything mm-hmm. they could even your antivirus, whatever, any subscription service, a lot of the money they make, Dennis, is off of people who don't even know they're subscribed anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, well, like that's like, a, people are, you're forgetting, like, the guy, the Sony dude is, what he's really forgetting is that people stay. If they like the service, they stay. They're not going to leave after they finish their game, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like I've, ha- I've had this, I've had Game Pass now for about a year, uh, a year, maybe a year and a half, and I don't see me not using it anymore. And there was like maybe there was one or two games that came out on Game Pass that made me go, oh wow, I should get Game Pass. And then I finished those games and I stayed and I continued to pay that monthly subscription fee to try out all the other games. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things where you might not you might not make the money back as quickly, but you will make the money back over time, and you'll make more money over time. You know, it's yeah, he's he's thinking too short term about it. But hey, look, it, his opinion doesn't matter too much, does it? He what's he doing nowadays what's uh, his, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna google him what the hell is this guy up to nowadays I, I don't know but i'm just yeah his his uh his math Sean is, Layden. yeah his math is a bit off uh where mine is like okay you're they are obviously losing money and microsoft has you know obviously more money than sony so they can do that i think that's kind of the main issue is sony doesn't have that bankroll to do something like this um and yeah they are losing money now but their their goal is to start making a profit in the future. I mean, look, people don't realize is like Amazon. Do you know how many years Amazon was in the red? Like before they started turning a profit? I think it was a good, I mean, how, like even in the 90, even in the nineties when it was a bookstore, like Amazon went bankrupt a year after they formed. And then if it wasn't for Jeff's, if it wasn't for Mr. Bezos's incredibly wealthy parents bailing him out, we wouldn't have had Amazon, you know? Um, but it, but, but investors knew they were losing money. They just kept investing yeah. more and more because they're like, you have enough uh, of a base. You have enough people mm. that are invested in this. And we see long term that this is going to pay off. And then eventually it starts turning a profit. Now it makes tons of money. Um, so that's kind of the goal for Game Pass as well. And so anyways, I, I just found that to be funny. Like. That he yeah. thinks Look, that... Sh- Sean's opinion doesn't matter, Dennis. He's been unemployed for a year. Mm. I looked it up, okay? okay. <laughs> He's been unemployed for a... Well, mind you, I guess the right term is retired, but whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on, sidestepping to our next big topic, which mm. was Halo Infinite. They had their beta this past uh, weekend, and you know they had a lot of uh, videos up that you could see, technical previews, del- developers talking about different things you can do but overall it was a pretty good from what i've read from uh 
both uh, websites and from like the general public is that it was pretty well received that people really enjoyed it and obviously it was not perfect there were still bugs and technical hiccups i think especially on the pc side i think you know they were showing off some uh uh regular xbox one footage and then then series x footage and and pc footage and whatnot and all looked pretty pretty good i mean you know kind of at this point with these type of games it's like it's more about the gameplay than the the graphics. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, especially because they're hundred oh, percent. It's this game is all about the shooting mechanics. Yeah. It has to, in order to like keep, look. You can make the world's prettiest first person shooter. Yeah. But like, if the mechanics, like it does, the, the mechanics don't even have to suck. The mechanics can be average, mm-hmm. and people are gonna they're gonna play it and get bored of it after like a few months. But if you have amazing gameplay mechanics, people look at CS:GO. How well? I mean, Counter Strike in general. Like, how many? Mm-hmm. Like, Dennis, you and I have we, we've count, we, like we know Counter Strike has been around for like more than twenty years. Yes, I years. played it when it was a Half Life mod. Uh, yeah, and, and in well, beta, one point six. Yeah, oh, I was before 6, when man. it was like point something. Really? Yeah, dude, I, I was playing I played, that. Man, I, I was playing I played that 1. shit. 6 uh, yeah, I was playing. Source. Yeah, before it was even one point oh. At the... But no, that's like that's how you know good good game mechanics will continue we'll give a game uh continuation which is my like my takeaway from this is i can well i think we both can agree that this game is going to do well i think it's going to do very well i don't know about the longevity of it you know that I mean? that's, that's the thing that's, that's the what thing. i'm worried about that's where they're trying to aim for that's why you know they're mm-hmm. trying to make it you know you can play on the xbox one you can play on the xbox series x you can play on the pc because remember there's it's going to be the multiplayer is going to be free to play not the campaign and also, and you assuming have all... cross-platform, which would uh, be yes, yes. It would, it is... If it's cross-platform, they can probably sell. Well, if it's cross-platform, there's more, um, how, how, not more hype. There's more, not more need, not more want. Well, people are more like likely and willing to buy a battle pass if they come out with a battle pass for the multiplayer. You yeah, know, yeah. They, like, well, they are. Cosmetic. Yeah, they are definitely yeah. coming out with battle passes. They, you know, they want to kind of follow the formula of Fortnite and Apex Legends. They see like how much money those two games are making and and halo multiplayer has always been uh one of the driving forces of the game they've decided to make that gamble of okay if you don't want to play the campaign you don't have to fork out the money you can just play the multiplayer for free and in the hopes of i think it's awesome like i think that's freaking awesome yeah and also that's not that is not something i I don't think that's something sony would have done you know mm -hmm. so i mean sony doesn't have an fps game but you know no No. So, you know, this is their their gamble. They they, they want to kind of revive Halo as an eSport because uh, it's, you know, died off a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, it was huge in like the early 2010s, yeah. late 2000s as well. Yeah. The Dude, the, the, the Halo, the eSports League was insanely, it was insanely competitive. It was very yeah. popular. Uh, the game, look, if they want to create their like own live service version of Halo, as long as they don't mess with the gun mechanics, it's going to be golden. Yeah. Like I, I don't whether it's going to be as successful as Apex or Fortnite. I don't necessarily know that, but I think that they will have success. They, they just might not be, you know, a billion dollar. It's not going to be like a billion dollar game overnight, you know. No, uh, uh, but, I, but think, I think I, th- I think it's going to be at least a somewhat success because of several factors. One, it's free, right? Two, mm. people like myself have Game Pass, so I'll be getting. I don't, I'm not paying any extra for it, so I'm getting it. You're be playing the, the story mode looks yes, fun I'll, too. Yes, I'll play. Big I'll be open play, world levels. You know? Yeah, I'll be playing the story mode, and then as soon as I'm done with that, then I'll probably hop into multiplayer. And and if, to be honest, that you know, I've, I've said this many times, I'm just not a huge. Uh, like I play Apex player, more yeah, than yeah. like, but I never really play Fortnite. I just I haven't played these games. But Halo is something I know. Halo to me, Halo is something different. It isn't the same thing as. You know, as we're talking about, like, remember Ubisoft, they had Hyperscape and it died. And, yeah. Um, and it sucks because Hyperscape actually is fun. It yeah. just died out because there's there's no players. There's It's a marketplace. I, 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 yeah. it's it's That's why I'm worried about, like, when that's my only worry about this is that this game could honestly, Dennis, it could honestly be amazing. Mm-hmm. And it could still die out for absolutely no reason. See, I don't think you know so. I, mean? I don't think so because I mean, I they have so will. many things going yeah. for it in terms of... I'm not even talking about the quality of the game. 
I'm talking about like the Halo uh, brand name, right? So everyone knows Halo. And then maybe some people have fallen off from Halo, right? Let's say you used to be a diehard Halo fan and you haven't been playing a lot recently. Oh, well, I, I don't have to invest any money. Okay, it's free. Free to play multiplayer. I'll, I'll do that. A lot of people, like a lot of my friends, I'm like huge into the campaign stuff, but some of mm. my friends are Halo uh, fans and they just play the multiplayer. They buy the game and well, they just the jump right great, in. Though. It they is just great. jump in the multiplayer. So you just have that installed, but you're going to have that immediately installed yeah. base that something like Hyperscape never could have. No one's ever heard of Hyperscape. It's not on True. any type of free service. It had it. It had to have its. Own, you had to do it through the Ubisoft launcher, I think. It had to have its own launcher. It had its. It was. It was still an annoying thing to kind of deal with, which makes sense. It's not not as accessible as the other uh, free to play games. Yeah, I think as long as the game is quality, I think this thing is going to be a big hit. Do I think it's going to yeah. be like Fortnite, Apex Legends, big? Uh, maybe not, but I think it maybe can at least be Call of Duty, Warzone. I think big. it's war. Yeah, I think it's going to be Warzone big. Actually, mm -hmm. it's funny you bring that up because th that's my biggest worry. Is I don't see this game dying out right away either because it's so good. My worry is that it kind of like fades out like mm -hmm. Warzone. Where, and it, look, it's not really fair to say that Warzone's faded out because Warzone is still one of the most watched uh, things on Twitch. Mm -hmm. People are still playing it. There's still a lot of hype around it. Um, but not nearly as much hype as there was a year ago for Warzone. You know, mm -hmm. like the Warzone hype was huge a year ago. And now it's like, yeah, there's still hype to it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Fortnite, same, I'd say Fortnite lost its hype, but it didn't lose its player base. Mm -hmm. Like they still have millions of kids playing every single Which is game. hilarious because this is totally a little side note is like you see like ninjas like uh, streaming numbers have tanked he's, he's, because yeah. because he's not playing Fortnite. It has nothing to do with yeah. like his popularity. It's like he decided he wanted to play. Uh, I forgot the number, but the Final Fantasy, which one? It's Final like, Fantasy, four, probably fourteen. It's There's like an old of, one. Online one. It's like an old oh, one. Oh, I saw that. I actually watched that stream. I enjoyed that stream. But he's like his stream Final numbers Fantasy are like half. eleven. Yeah, he's they're like half Fantasy of what 11. they were. Yeah, because people are just like, yeah. oh, well, you're, he's not playing Fortnite. I only want him. It's it's interesting because streamers are kind of known for particular games, and so when they kind of mm. jump around, some get, people will follow. Some people are like, "Nah, it's off brand." Uh, yeah. They don't get they don't get that choice. It's off brand for them, you know. Which um, is you know a little tough because you know remember at the end of the day, these companies own these brands, right? Like there's some. Well, what sucks epic is if the, the game sport, dies out, yeah. your career dies out. Yeah, that's exactly. what really sucks. Yeah. If the game, like, I mean, that happens well, a lot. Well, I mean, remember to go off topic here. A lot of like a lot of um, a lot of streamers got famous because of Among Us, and now yeah. they still have a big following, but their numbers, like their live numbers, are dipping because they're not playing Among Us, and nobody really wants to watch people play Among Us anymore. And yeah, it's, it's a trend. Happens. It's a trend. I mean, this but, is uh, well, going back to. Uh, I was just um, saying, for example, uh, this is you know, you know, you have to be old school to know this, but like before there was any live streaming. Remember, there was that guy. Uh, what's his face? Uh, he had the same name as me, Dennis Thresh something, Fong or whatever. I forgot his last name. He was basically the, the king of doom. And he oh, was like wow. he was like super famous. And, I mean, for that time. Um, let me see. his. Yeah, And he was winning whatever, all those like doom tur tournaments. Uh, and he was I like semi- I still remember the, uh, the guy who- Yeah, Dennis Fong, was... Thresh. He was like the king of doom. I mean, like- have you even heard of him? I may have. Did he, wasn't he also very well known for playing Quake? Probably, yeah, Quake and Doom. Quake yeah, and Doom. I think was I think he could have been the guy, the guy who made Quake. Um, he's also quite famous. I forget his name. Uh, currently, he's famous for doing digital art. I think he does like a digital art piece every day on his Instagram, and they're always amazing. Um, but he, he straight up like they did a Quake, a Quake three. There was a Quake Arena tournament in the early 2000s, and he put up his own Ferrari yes, as yes. A, <laughs> he put as the competition prize, yeah. which was crazy. And some guy won it. I, that could have yeah. been Thresh. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it was Thresh. So, but Thresh is, um, you know, he's retired now, but it's, he's 44. You know, so he's like around my age. You know, it, there's just a limited window of when you can be this like one a professional gamer. And oh, yeah. then also to have like your your kind of name in the in you know like you, you got to get make your money and get out you know I, you know five years from now I, you know I'm not saying Ninja will disappear but I just don't I don't know if he'll hold the relevancy I that think he it'll had be sooner than that maybe like, yeah yeah honestly 
but like he just like, doesn't hold the relevancy that that he had before you know it's just but you know what dennis at the end of the day he made his 15 million oh yeah I say that, that's no after, no that's no after one's after no one's crying for him okay <laughs> yeah no one's crying for him i'm just saying uh, yeah i'm just saying like that's that's the name of the game or whatever and um, so so games going, are going back uh, real quick go ahead yeah, going back real quick to uh, Halo. One of the things I'm most looking forward to is, and this is such a small, stupid thing, and I don't think enough games have this, which is the a shooting range to like mm -hmm. just. It's such such a simple thing. Okay, well, I guess Apex has it, mm -hmm. uh, Valorant has it. Now that I think about it, a lot of games have it, but not not that many games. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's nice. They have a shooting range where they have like three different uh, testing dummies. You know, they can either stand still or they can strafe and move around. And it's just a great way to practice your aiming before a game. Like, I, like, I can't tell you how much time I spend in the shooting range in Valorant. Mm -hmm. Like, I do a good, like, like 20 minutes every day just in that shooting range before I hop, in, I hop into a game to make sure that my aim's up to slack. So I like that. People are commenting on the weapons. Like, they have this grenade launcher type thing that kind of, like, you can bang off walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. The gameplay looks good. Uh, going back to what you were saying, one of the reasons why I think that this, uh, well, it's not that I think. It's more like I know, because you know it as well. You said it. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's going to be successful is because it's Halo. You know, you're going to have a lot of people who were are going to buy the single-player game, whether they, like you said, multiplayer is free. I know that. But a lot of the people, once they're done with the single-player, of course they're going to try out the multiplayer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they're probably going to be more equipped for it because... You're gonna be you're gonna be used to using your grappling gun, grappling hook thing, because it's in the main storyline. So you're gonna get that practice. That's what the reason I when I was younger, the reason I always preferred games like Halo and Call of Duty was because after you finish the storyline, the main storyline, it gives you that like confidence to go into multiplayer yes. and be like, I know what I'm doing. I know how, yeah. how these guns work. You know, and and that's something that. A well, Apex kind of has it, I guess, with Titanfall. Titanfall. They're just not they're just not directly linked together. Yeah. But uh, that's like that's the one thing that uh, a game like Valorant is missing, where it's like th there there's a high learning curve. You mm -hmm. know, there's no single player game where you, there's no PVE to get you into it. It's just straight up difficulty curve right from the beginning. Uh, so that, so yeah, uh, Halo doesn't have a difficulty curve. You know, mm -hmm. you can jump straight into the, if you're competitive, you can jump straight into the multiplayer. If you you don't even have to play the multiplayer, like I said, you can play the single player. Or if you want to play the multiplayer, but you're too worried about it being too competitive, finish the single player first. You know, maybe once on easy, then again on medium, and again on hard. Work your way up, get into uh, the multiplayer, and it seems fun. It seems like I, I'm. I just want to play the game already, which is sad because isn't didn't it get delayed again? Or what? no, I mean not. Well, I mean wait, when is it's coming out? In November, soon, isn't it? Yeah. I can't wait to play this game. Yeah. Honest to God, cannot wait to play this game. Uh, I would actually, I've been craving to play Warzone, but I cannot get over how big that game is in terms of size. And I can't justify, un until I buy another SSD, I can't justify mm -hmm. like having like a like 100 plus gigs spare just for that, you know? Yeah. So I'm look I'm looking forward to it, you know? That's also another thing. If, if Halo can, if if Halo multiplayer is free and on PC, and it's half the size of Warzone. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that they've just stolen a couple uh, of players right there, you know? Yeah. Um, another thing, too, is uh, they have... Well, I guess let's talk... I want to talk about the whole Halo name thing. So, for me, mm. I was, like, the first Halo I was obsessed with. And Halo... Around the Halo 1, Halo 2 uh, was probably the height of my, you know, Halo fandom, right? Um, where I was just playing it all the time. And Halo 3, which is weird because coincidentally, Halo 3 is actually my favorite of all, all of the Halo games. But at that time, it was like I was still loving Halo, but, you know, I wasn't as obsessed with it as I was before. Uh, you know, I played ODST, 4. I actually never played 5, even though I own it. And so my Halo fandom has kind of waned since that time. But Halo Infinite is kind of, you know the hype of it is getting me more and more excited to to play it. So it's kind of the first Halo game in a while that's really kind of got me, you know, anticipating. Because, you know, the Halo 1 and 2, you know, I was like at the, at you know, at that time, I don't even think it was GameStop. It was probably like Electronic Boutique or something else. Anyways, it, you know, those were the games that were like I was waiting in line at midnight to show up, you know. That, that doesn't really happen anymore. Um, 
So anyways, th- I think this Halo is kind of going to reinvigorate the the Halo fan base to kind of e- even me like older gamers who who were big into it before but kind of fell off and to come back into it. Yeah. What what I'm finding interesting here is and I might need to read up more about this, but I guess you there's an AI in the game. That is cool you choo- too. You can choose you can choose your own personal AI or the personality of your AI. Yeah, that that part is cool too cuz I think you can play like let's say if you want to do like 4v4, you can play you could do yourself and like three people like you me and whatever two other friends and we play against four bots which is cool because that that's a good way to drill right because then you're not playing against other people you can start playing against uh the computer yeah so there's a there's a couple things about this that like it's i'm just excited for it i'm i'm really looking forward to when the game came out they, it's funny you said halo uh that you, uh, you said halo uh would you say halo 3 was your favorite yes I, that's the Halo I started on because uh, uh, I never had an Xbox as a kid. And Xbox was really not popular in South Africa. Pretty hmm. much everyone owned uh, uh, everyone owned Sony. Or, that, or sounds like you know? <laughs> that sounds like so, Japan. That sounds like Japan. The first time I experienced an Xbox actually was when I moved to America, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, back in 2013. And yeah, played Halo 3, uh, Halo 4, played through the story. Uh, I played Halo 4 story mode co-op. And I really enjoyed that mm-hmm. with, with my roommate at the time. But uh, like I said, that's I think I told you this before, but Halo 4 is what I fell in love with a game mode called Griff Ball, mm-hmm. and I hope they bring that back. And it's such a stupid game. Like There's an actual ball going around. You have those giant hammers, and you're just hammering the ball, <laughs> and it's like soccer. It's so stupid, and everyone has those the, the, the energy blade things yeah, that you're yeah. slicing each other up with. It's yeah. uh, such a fun mode. Uh, yeah, man, I think this is going to do really well. Like, here, here's the thing. You and I were both excited when we fo- when we saw the original launch trailer, right? Mm-hmm. Like the original E3 trailer from a couple years ago. We both said, "Hey, this looks fun. It doesn't look that polished. Mm-hmm. You know, it looked it looked like the the textures weren't that great, yeah. but the wor- the the big open world levels look good. The mechanics look good. I wanted to play just based off of fun, and I was like, I just wish that the game looked a bit more crisp, a bit more next gen. And then, sure as shit, a year later, they dropped like a new video, and they're like, "Hey, we made the game more crisp." We yeah. saw that that's what you guys complained about. We made better textures. We made the game more crisp. And then, obviously, all the mechanics are the same. It's just... I think it's going to be good. I don't see anybody complaining on day one of this, you know? Mm-hmm. Especially because I think they have taken their time with this, you know? And people were upset that there were delays. People were upset that they took their time. But, hey, I mean, we're here now. Yeah. August is around the corner, you know? We made it here. It was it was, it was, was a long... It was a long uh, run of like two different delays but we've made it here and i'm pretty sure the game's gonna launch and is gonna be critically acclaimed by most people it's not gonna be a cyberpunk situation where mm-hmm. half where like half the people have their game crashes everyone's gonna have a very positive now that i think about it i think it's gonna be so positive that i'm worried about their servers for the multi it's it's free if it's a free to play multiplayer yeah. game i'm genuinely i'm actually worried about their servers on the first week like I mean, yeah, it's Microsoft. You yeah. know, that's got the, the that's the benefit. Servers. Well, they they also benefit. they also specialize in servers. Them and Amazon. Exactly. So hopefully we won't see any like server breakages on the first week. But yeah, I dude, I'm just excited for this because it's gonna be on PC and like it's, yeah, like I knew it was gonna be on PC. But I'm looking, I'm just looking forward to having another competitive game to play on PC. I used to like to play Apex, but I can't play that on a bad ping. Like mm-hmm. I have to connect to a European server. There's just too much going on for you to play with bad ping, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like too much explosions and grenades and effects going around. My game slows down too much. I could probably turn it all off and make and play it on like the lowest settings, which is what most people do, I'm guessing, when they play mm-hmm. competitively. But I don't know. I like how pretty the game is. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, man. I'm, I'm excited for this. I'm looking forward to it. Lastly, before we move on to the next topic, is that uh, they had originally said there wouldn't be a battle royale uh, mode, mm. but now people have found some uh, uh, tech preview files that has the Halo announcer saying battle royale. So it seems like they may be, you know, changing their minds, which would make sense because uh, there's a battle royale mode for like all of these games, and I mean they're exciting. Battle Royales are exciting. Yeah. Even though they're overdone and they're like definitely like the market's oversaturated for Battle Royales, it is really fun getting into a game 
where there's like a hundred people and only one person can survive. There's like, there's something about that pressure that like fuels me. Uh, the reason that they, I mean, sorry, the fact that they found this as a reference in the files uh, leads me to believe that it's going to be, well, I mean, if they are going to have a battle royale mode, it's going to be exactly that. It's going to be a mode. It's not going to be their main yeah. like form of multiplayer. It's an option. It's, it's an option. It'll be, yeah, it'll be an option, which I think is cool because all these other free to play games, you don't have the option. It's like they're all a battle royale. You yeah. can choose to be alone or duos or squads. That That's your choices. There's no other game mode choices. The only game like that is Call of Duty where it's like, hey, here's other game modes you can play. You know, there's multiple game modes you can play. Um, so, yeah, no, I think uh, I think that they will have a battle royale mode, but because it's a mode and not a thing on its own, it's not going to be 100 players, you know? No, like most, no, no. I, I see them doing something like maybe 30 or 40 yeah. at the most. If it, But uh, the way the gameplay works... I, yeah, I could see them doing 50 players at most for a battle royale. But at the same time, they could do a much smaller map or a smaller mm -hmm. area and just have 20 people, you know, and have like a quick... That's just a much quicker battle royale, you know? Yeah, I, I would assume less game. people because remember Halo, you don't die as fast as in other games, yeah, you know? Um, exactly. So, I, you know, the game's going to last a bit longer. Especially so. if there's things like heals and stuff like that around, yeah, you know? Yeah, you, you have your shield, you have, you know, a bunch of other stuff like that, so... Um, all right, let's move on to the next topic. This one I'm excited about because I've been like obsessed with this game the past uh, week, which is The Scent. So I actually did a mm. first impressions review or not a review or preview, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's up on the channel. I mean, since then, I've played it another five, six hours. Um, yeah, I'm loving this game. I'm addicted to it. Uh, you know, I, I talked to you before. It's like I haven't really been playing any kind of isometric either shooters or hack and slash type of games i mean twin stick shooters also like that's something i really played in arcades more often and you know i'm loving the game the graphics are fantastic um i play it on my the world PC. is great yeah it's a cyberpunk world a cyberpunk aesthetic that kind of it's less 80s style than cyberpunk 2077 and it's kind of more star wars it's almost like a cyberpunk it's like, star wars it's also like kind of noir i have yeah. it like it has it, it's like, a, the blade like runner cyberpunk noir yeah, it has a very dark Blade Runner tone to it as well. Yeah. Um, I will say because I know, uh, and we're well, we're gonna play some of the game after this as well. Yeah. Maybe we can film, film some footage of the co-op. Yeah. Uh, I haven't gotten as far into the game as you have. I'm, I've like, I think I've, I've, I think I've only completed the tutorial, and I died so many times at the tutorial, and I, I was just having not a good time with the game. But it's one of those games where. As I was playing the game, every single mechanic that they introduced, I was like, this is cool. This is sick. And I think maybe I just wasn't in the gaming mode the mm -hmm. day that I played that game. Because it's one of those games where as I was playing it, I was like, I appreciate this game. But why am I? But there's something about it where I'm not enjoying it. But I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to love like, it. Well, like I was going to say, at the same time, I know for a fact everybody else I know who works in gaming journalism mm -hmm. or works as or just works in the gaming industry they're all loving this game. Yeah. You know, like awesome. these are people where I respect and revere their opinions. And if they're telling me, hey, Josh, play the game, you'll enjoy it, then I should. I don't know. Maybe I was just in a bad mood. No, that I think you need to get further yeah. along because in the, in the beginning of the game, because you were kind of talking about the gameplay mechanics and you're having a little mm. trouble. And I think it's because you actually need to boost your aim like in the beginning they yeah, purposely I they didn't know they yeah, they, you, they you nerf they nerf crazy. yeah they nerf your your aim your the rotation because you know it's a isometric shooter so the 360 degrees they don't actually give you the 360 degrees of, of shooting they give you like you know whatever every 45 degree angle and then you have to like up your skill points so you can get like more and more degrees of of angles to shoot and even and here my, and here's the thing as well with the game um, and I actually spoke to a buddy about this who just uh, he put out a review as well on the game mm -hmm. and he told me it's a thing where it's like most likely what's happening to me is I'm playing this game and I'm like ah it's a shooter game and that's all I'm thinking with. and he's like no Josh you need to dodge <laughs> you need to do do oh like, yeah you're, you definitely you're, have to you're, dodge your dodge your whole like sidestepping dodge thing it's so important and because I'm in a shooting game I'm not used to things like dodging or well, there's no parry in the game, as far as I know yet, no. maybe. No, at but least yeah, not like, so far. I always think of dodging and parrying, or like, in like hack and slash type games. So because I've got a gun, I'm like, why do I need a dodge roll? I have a gun, you know? 
but uh, it's so pivotal to the game and you can you to and you need to yeah. uh, duck and cover uh you can get you yeah. uh, it's a there's a cover system as well in the game yeah you also yeah. got to like duck and crouch to get under things and stuff like that yeah which you, i've noticed you can like some a lot of the things you have to crouch under you can also just straight up di like dive roll through it mm -hmm. um which is quite cool too but, there's uh, a lot yeah, of cool augmentations and yeah. in, in in up weapon upgrades and so i think you just haven't yeah. gotten further far enough in the game I need to treat the game like it's Hades because that's the one thing that I haven't realized is that it really is similar to that game in mm. terms of you need... Well, Hades is like... I mean, dodging later... And Hades, dodging becomes an attack if it mm -hmm. if it can. But half the time, you're just using it to dodge. But yeah, I, d I need to play the game more. I think I'll enjoy it when we start... When we play some co-op after yes. this. I think, yes. I think I'll enjoy it more. All right. Uh, so yeah, I, I think you once you play it some more, we'll do like a, a, a review of it. Uh, my first impressions mm -hmm. are already up there. Loving it. Favorite game of the year so far. Um, yeah, having a blast. And like, you know, the whole Game Pass thing, totally worth it. This game, I think is only $30 too if you don't have Game Pass, but I don't know why you don't have Game Pass. But okay, so it's $30. I played this. I played Medium already, which came out earlier this year. And then I'm going to get Halo. Dark, twisted game. Beautiful game. Yeah. Man, I was not ready for how heavy that game was. <laughs> like, in terms of the content. It's, uh, so it's that's not, only... not only is it scary, but it's heavy. <laughs> yeah. But think about that. So that's only three games that I probably will have fully played at the end of the year. I've played some other sprinkles here and there, but I haven't really, really played yeah. it. That's only three games. It's already once worth more than, time, more than the money the time, that I'm think... paying. Yeah, once you get the time as well, I think you'll enjoy Yakuza Like a Dragon, yeah. which is also definitely worth the money on there. And yeah. well, the thing is, you've you've already enjoyed half of what Game Pass has to offer. You just already played it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like now, especially with Bethesda being on there, all the Fallout games, all the the uh, um, the Elder Scrolls games. Like, I'm not playing them because I've already played them. But if I if I if I had never played a Fallout game or a, or an Elder Scrolls game before in my life. I'd be so stoked about Game oh, Pass. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I'd be so stoked about Game Pass. I'm, I'm debating whether I should download uh, Fallout uh, 4 or 76 on my computer and just start playing it. So Yeah. Well, Fallout 76 is quite a big installation on the PC. Yeah, that's my I've been considering concern. the same thing, literally, between Fallout 4 or 76. Yeah. But I think I might go to Fallout 4 just to get that story. Well, yeah. then again, they've added story to 76, and you've been telling me to give it a try oh, for yeah, a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's way But Remember, I, tra I trashed it. I trashed mm. it when it first came out because I was like, what the hell is this? You're making me pay money for this? Uh, and then finally, they, <laughs> they added... Honestly, honestly, the condition that it was in, yeah. they shouldn't have charged any money for um, when it first launched. Now it's in a much better place. Not perfect, but still in a much better place. Um, all right. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was Oculus Quest 2. Uh, mm. People who are into VR like I am, they had a recall uh, on... Basically, the they they've this is unprecedented, but you know you know Facebook has the money they can do this. They've stopped selling the Quest Two for until the end of this month uh, because the foam mass that comes with the the Quest Two was causing irritation on people's skins on their face. Oh wow! Uh, even myself, I get a little bit when I play. Uh, not anything crazy. It goes away. It's it's, it's just it's it is there it's just though. Irritated. Yeah, is it like an itch. Yeah, it doesn't. For me, it doesn't even itch. It just looks. You just notice it. You can just yeah, feel it it's there very yeah, it's there. very a bit of redness. Obvious, yeah, it's very obvious. And okay. so, and some people get it worse. So they basically have stopped this. Uh, they're not taking back my quest two. They're just going to send me a silicone replacement. Um, yeah, for it. But they've for stopped, free, which is cool. Yeah. Well, the other thing that sucks though, and it's like always suck. Don't ever be an early adopter. So I bought the quest mm. two last year at launch got it a month later they were giving away a free uh rift game which you could play with oculus link that i wasn't able to get even though i had bought the game like a month earlier to incentivize people purchasing it asgard's wrath which is like a 30 dollars game didn't get that and now so when they come back to start selling the quest 2 in, in at the end of this month the units are actually going to have 128 gigs of storage. Mine was only 64, and it's the same price. Uh, I was going to say that's a big, that's same, a big bump. Well, it's a double for the that's same price. Bump, yeah, for the same price. So yeah, not too happy about that either. So you, I mean, I'm happy because you know I'm I've yes, been wanting get, to get a yeah. Quest Two for a while, and 
Well, I mean, I'm still not gonna I'm still not gonna have an easy time getting it in South Africa, but hopefully I'll be back in the United States soon. And when I am, I'm gonna get myself. Of, of course, I'm gonna get myself this one. It's double the space, Dennis. Yeah, I'd be a fool. I'd be a fool to, so to try to get the double the space one. for the same price. But anyways, so that's what's going on with the Quest Two, which is so weird that at this time, other than buying well, like. Foam, you know. foam is not a long-term thing either. That's the issue with the foam. Yeah. Like, which I'm sure they, they don't care about that, but it's another good thing that they're changing because not all foam, but some foam does deteriorate over over time just because of age. Mm-hmm. Like, it gets to the point where you can like actually like physically scrape through the foam with your finger. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so yeah, it's it gives it gives it more longevity as well. I think. Yeah. So, anyways, that's just some interesting uh, Oculus VR news. Uh, next thing up, Back for Blood. They actually God, had so uh, they had a closed beta. I think they're gonna have an open beta. Uh, I think in a couple weeks. But anyways, uh, they showed off some of the the footage and some of the gameplay. Interesting thing is they have this whole card system going on, where like, you know, you kind of set your different cards to help. You know, you can mix and match, so you can see what kind of uh, boost that you want for your character. You can, you know, if you don't like certain ones or if certain levels, you want to change them up, you can. But they also are giving the enemies a certain, like a card system as well. So it, once you go into a round, oh. they will randomly get a card that helps boost them. And then you kind of have to deal with that. So it keeps things fresh, right? It I really keeps... hope microtransactions don't get involved in these because I'm yeah, looking at it knows? now. And it doesn't, I mean, look, look. From the from the screenshots we can see, it doesn't look like I see. I don't see any dollar signs. Yeah, I don't you know? see any. Either. But it's like, how do you get these cards? You know, like I can see how you implementing implementing them. You're creating decks. You know, you have your own different decks for every for whatever classes you're playing. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, most like. Well, here's the thing. I also highly doubt that people would. It's a spiritual successor to a very well known game. You know, I highly doubt that they would go that route. Like you probably just have to grind them in game. You know. Yeah. It just looks like something that you could easily slap microtransactions onto, but I'm yes. hoping that they're not going to do that. I don't think that they would, because I think that this they would know that they would get backlash, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so anyways, that's another game coming out. Uh, I can't... Was Back for Blood, is it going to be on Game Pass? I can't remember. I don't think so, no. I don't think so, no. If, it was gonna, if they were going to do any deals, it most probably would have been with Valve, you know? That's with, true. Uh, with Steam. Uh, they would have done a deal with Steam if they were going to do any deals. No, Back for Blood. Confirmed Xbox Game Pass title. Oh, available wow. to play day one when it launches on October. This is what I'm telling you. That's how awesome. ca- how can you not <laughs> say this is the best deal in gaming? Like, it, it's crazy. I like the changes that they've made to, like, the class system. And they've added a bit... It adds a bit more strategy to the, to the game rather than just four people clearing out a room of zombies, you know? Yeah. There's a bit more strategy involved um they've made like the they've made some changes there which is what i like yeah uh you obviously uh for anybody interested i believe you can play the the beta uh if you pre-order the game yes the open beta uh yeah. you can play from august 5th and 9th if you've pre-ordered it hmm. um not too sure if that's strictly on console or pc or anything but okay. yeah beta yeah to anyone it? who's pre oh hold on hold on i got this wrong uh Early access open beta that runs from the 5th to the 9th of August for anyone who's pre-ordered with a fully open beta. Okay, so open you just wait a, a, a week. There's there's an open beta yeah. for everyone from August 12th to 16th, which I think I'll check out as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there's a... You're looking forward to this game. Psychonauts 2 is coming out on August 12th. Oh, yes! On Game Pass. 12 Minutes is coming out on August 19th. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, that's that that kind of like narrative Ooh. Annapurna interactive game. The only thing I'm I, I just wish I was I would just wish I was a young child because like I said, Psychonauts is a game that is geared more towards children. And if I was like 13 or 14 years old, I'd be so st- I'm still stoked on the game. I'm gonna play it because I I never in my life thought there was gonna be a sequel. In my in my Dennis, I I would like I would if you told me like even with the current climate, like I'd say with the most popularity of like Crash Bandicoot when that mm-hmm. remake came out and like remakes were a big thing. If you had to tell me in that era that there would be a sequel to this game, even with all the remakes, I'd say I'd, I'd still be like, no bullshit. There's no way. Mm-hmm. Psychonauts is such an obscure indie game, cold classic. No one's going to make a remake or a sequel to that game. 
And then there was the freaking VR thing, which uh, like apparently was quite fun, but quite short. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, now we have a sequel. I'm so stoked for it. I just, I still can't believe it's happening. Even though it's a children's game, I'm excited for it. It's, it's, it's cool. It's also got my favorite voice actor of all time um, coming back. Um, this next topic is something I'm interested in. Uh, I have always said World War Z was kind of a surprise for me when it came out. Uh, yeah. It was just a lot of fun. You know, most, most movie tie-in games suck. Uh, this was actually a lot of fun. It was basically, it's like Left 4 Dead, but a third-person perspective. So if you watch this new uh, gameplay trailer for the sequel, you'll see they've added a kind of a first-person mode, which I don't, I don't know. You know, the, the fun thing about World War Z was that it was like Left 4 Dead, but a th third-person, mm. which they still have the third-person. It's not like they got rid of it. It's just that they've added this first-person mode as well. Uh, I guess I got to play it to see, but they've just added a lot more stuff, new weapons, uh, new melee system, which is cool. Cause you know, who, who, who doesn't want to like take a bat and just beat up zombies. And so, yeah. And this is going to be coming out. Uh, I think Yeah, the first, per at least the first person mode looks good. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like it, it, it looks, it, yeah. it, it look, it's ver it's not it's very difficult to screw up a first person mode, but you'd be surprised. I've seen I've seen some horrible ones out there with like the guns not lining up and stuff. So it looks good. The game looks quite nice in first person. Um, this is something that they announced a while ago that I I said I'm quite excited for because it's not really a sequel, isn't it? Just an add on to the. It's still an it's still yeah, using the original game Yeah, but it's files. almost yeah, but it's almost like a sequel. I mean, they've, well, they've changed they've changed the game completely. Essentially, it's I'd almost say it's not it's not. I wouldn't really call it a sequel. It's more like a rebirthing, you know. Yeah. Or like uh, it's like uh, it got. I mean, fixed it's a, up it's an expansion, up. but it's like almost like yeah. That's like a good way of putting it. It's like an ex, it's like an entire. But it, it's experience. doubling like the levels. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. it's adding so much that it just feels like it, and it's also. It looks crisp as well. Yeah. Yeah. If you, uh, if no, you already that, that own the good. game, if you already own the game, which I do, it's 20 bucks for the upgrade. 40 bucks total for the whole thing. So you can play all yeah. like eight levels. But yeah, uh, I it's it's a blast. A lot of fun. Um, so I'll be looking out for that. I, yeah, this one is not on Game Pass. This one you do have to buy, but it's not an expensive game, which, you know, it's, it's crazy like, well, like you said, it's a twenty dollar upgrade. A lot of people have the original, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, all right. Moving on, to the next one is uh, Dragon Age is getting a Netflix series. Uh, it's yeah. being in development. Is it, is it live action? That is the thing that I wanted to talk about. They don't know mm. if it's anime or live action. I have to be honest with you. Not that I don't like animation. I'm getting tired of all of these animated projects i agree because, like there's so many the witcher has one um we just had dota Resident evil we, had another uh, one pacific rim um castlevania uh you know like there's so many animated ones that i'm just kind of like like can we get some live i know why they do it because it's cheaper <laughs> to to do it's animated the, yeah but, like there, there are certain things where it's like, look, when they did a, when they did another Resident Evil animated thing, I was like, Resident Evil is something you can easily film live action. Now, mm -hmm. Dragon Age, that's an expensive ass thing to yes. do live action. Like Dragon Age would like would make sense to me to do animated, and they wouldn't be able to screw it up if they did it animated, especially if they use the guys that did Castlevania. I think it would be very successful. But like you said, it's Get, like we're getting we're getting a little sick of it and it's not yeah. just you it's not just me like all of us it's we're not getting sick of it it's just like it's running its course it's too we're much a bit, yeah it's we're too many a bit bored of it yeah it's if not Netflix that they aren't the good money, it's not that they yeah. don't can't be good it's They're, just i don't want everything to be animated exactly if netflix has the money i really hope that they take i hope they go the route of like saying hey let's pump in big money to make this happen you know what i mean like big big money um, which is, it's one of those things where, hold on, is this Netflix? It is Netflix, right? It is Netflix. Yeah. yeah. If it was Amazon, I would actually have more, like, I would have more hope just because I know Amazon throws a lot of money at these bigger projects, like Lord of the Rings coming out in 2022. Oh, that thing looks like a butt ton of money put into that it's a, thing. It's, yeah, it's so much money. And it's like, 
Same with, from what I've heard, even though I don't think they've started on it yet, they're going to be doing a Final Fantasy XIV live action series set mm-hmm. in the world of Final Fantasy XIV online, which timing wise, I'm not going to like, they announced this a while ago, but now that Final Fantasy is like the most played MMO, like, like period, mm-hmm. uh, it's the most popular it's ever been, like, ever. Um, it's great. Like, uh, hopefully they can roll that, that show out soon, or at least bring up some announcements about it soon to keep the mm-hmm. traction going. Uh, I would like here's the thing Dennis I want I would love a live action Dragon Age series and I've been wanting it since the first game I would actually go so far as to say is that I would like to see them do the first game in a mm-hmm. series either that or just have a completely different thing just set in that world you know what I mean have their own whole separate show but set in that world and I would love a live action one I just think that there's so much room for error when you do live action like this. And and you don't know what the budget's going to be. Like look, The Witcher, The Witcher was an amazing series, but even on the very first episode of The Witcher on season 1, I did not like their their use of uh CGI over practical effects. Mm-hmm. Like the very first uh the very first like spider demon thing that uh that Geralt fights if they had just used the, they, honestly, they could have used a couple like sticks that they spray painted blue just to have more interaction between the sword and the creature mm-hmm. instead of just going full CGI. And then it looks weird when the sword's interacting with something that's not actually there. There's just a lot of room for error. So it's, I don't know. But knowing knowing Netflix and looking at their track record, it's probably going to be animated. Mm. Like yeah, most uh, most yeah. Probably. I don't think they're going to put the money into it. To be honest, yeah. I mean, it's, Dragon it's gonna Age should be animated. Dragon Age Wild Big, it's not, it's not quite like, it's not Halo Big, you know, it's not uh, Last of Us Big, it's, you know what I mean? I mean, Dragon Age, don't get me wrong, Dragon Age is a big game, but, you know, Mass, it is kind of the little brother to Mass Effect, Mass Effect was, yeah, true, you know, so. Well, especially in ter- just in terms of, like, scope as well, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's gonna, like it just sounds too world, expensive for you know, them the to lore, actually yeah. do. I feel like Mass Effect would be cheaper for them to do than Dragon Age because you can do, like, you can do great cheap Mm sci-fi. You know, you can't do good cheap fantasy. Yeah. Like, that's the one thing. I, I mean, that's from my own personal experience, having worked on many independent film sets. I, I, I worked on an indie sci-fi once that looked, it honestly looked trash when I was there, and then I saw the end product and I was like, holy crap, this looks amazing. You know, whereas with fantasy, it's, (laughs) it's, like, I don't know. It's very very easy to screw up fantasy, you know, even yeah. if you have a budget. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, the last thing is kind of some updates. This this story is just getting wild. Uh, we talked about last mm. week with Act- Activision and Blizzard, and uh, you had uh, basically a lot of the Activision Blizzard employees coming together to form their own coalition. Um, you know, and I'm not exactly sure, but it feels like it's it's kind of like a almost like a temporary union in a way. Um, basically, kind of protesting and criticizing Activision because they hired a law firm uh, as a third party auditor, and I guess you know they don't trust this this uh, law firm to actually do things correctly. Um, the president uh, resigned um, mm-hmm. from. Activision Blizzard, and then this right now, I think this just came out, which is uh, Mike Ibarra and Jen O'Neill will be taking over as Blizzard's co-heads. Uh, I think Jay Allen Brock, the the former president, he he's you know he's knee deep in this lawsuit uh, of harassment and toxic uh, work culture, um, and you know. They're they're uh, trying to release. They release you know some statements, basically you know, acknowledging what's going on, and trying to kind of put a more positive spin on on things. So in trying to say, yeah, look, we're gonna kind of change change the culture here. So yeah, this whole Activision Blizzard thing is super super messed up. It's it's and here's the thing. We're gonna we're gonna see a. I wouldn't say a lot, but we're going to keep seeing this in the news for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll, we'll we'll try to keep you guys updated. It's not on our top of the list because it is, it's not like we don't want to cover these kinds of things because mm-hmm. obviously they are important to talk about. But at the same time, it's just like the situation is going to get more and more complicated and it's going to get more and more messy. Uh, and I truly hope that the 
the the people who have been harassed. I hope that they um I hope that they uh what's the word I'm looking for? Like get their um not their retribution. I don't know what the term is, but I, I hope that like, I hope that I don't think the company is going to do good by them, but I hope that they're able to get out the other end um, mm -hmm. stronger, you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's just a horrible, it's just a horrible situation. But look, with regards to um, Jay Allen leaving, like, dude, I, 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 why are you still there in the first place? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, it's a horrible thing to say, but there was a, I think it was to, when they announced Diablo, the mobile edition, he literally got booed off stage at E3 but, or, or BlizzCon, I think it was, by like literally a room full of thousands of people. When you get, when a room full of thousands of people are actively booing you for the things coming out of your mouth, like I would have resigned right then and there, you know? Like, how do you take that in stride and then go, oh, you know what? And here's here, to backtrack, but this has got nothing to do with it. I actually think that the Diablo mobile game is going to do great because I've been keeping my uh, ears to the ground on that. And a lot of reviewers are saying it's good. It's literally Diablo 3, but on mobile. Mm -hmm. Literally Diablo 3, but on mobile. Uh, but man, talk about like not, how to not read a room. You know what I mean? And then like, just how, like how, I don't know the thought process behind Blizzard. Like what? Yes, this happened a while ago, but how can you in your right mind go in front of a room full of thousands of people and then decide to your big topic and then you're teasing a bunch of Diablo stuff and then everyone's getting stoked and you're like, yeah, it's mobile. Like, how could you think that that's a good idea as like the head of a company? You know what I mean? That it, it, it boggles my brain. They're just so out of touch with their fan base. Half of the half of what made Blizzard great is gone. Anyways, they like they they, they left years ago because either for personal issues or because they got old and they needed to retire, mm -hmm. you know, settle down kind of things. It's just, man, ah, just talking about Activision Blizzard gets me so upset. Like, and this is before, this is before the whole harassment thing. You know, And you know me, Dennis, I actively dislike Activision and Blizzard, and this was before all this harassment stuff came out. But what's disgusting about this stuff is that we're not talking about recent things. We're talking about, th like, things that have been going on for 10 plus years you know mm -hmm. what i mean like these aren't all it's it's a horrible situation like when you read into it uh we're not going to talk about it on here but uh, if you read into it like a lot of the things that were said and done are just creepy and they would make yes. any any human being feel uncomfortable if they were happening around them you know yeah um but yeah like this it's it's a topic that we're going to see more and more of in the future for sure um because I believe there's now a second lawsuit uh, going on, um, which is interesting. I, I, it's difficult to keep up with. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff going on there. So yeah, we'll be a lot, a lot of people talking about a lot of people talking about unionization within the gaming industry right now. Like a lot of people. They should. I mm -hmm. mean, I've been talking about it for a long time. You know, when you you, you hear and talk, and you know, I've talked to some people as well hearing firsthand just kind of the uh even if we're not even talking about the harassment and and um that type of uh a toxic uh work culture behavior you also have the kind of uh overworking um kind of uh exploitation of people's work um in the gaming industry where like you know you have during crunch time just people just you know, just making them work like tons and tons and tons of hours and then either not paying them enough or not paying them for their OT or maybe OT doesn't have any type of uh, extra uh, mon monetary uh, reward for that. You know what I mean? Like just, you know, that type of stuff, you know, would get fixed if you had a union. You know, who, you know who else I feel bad about? And like, this is like, in terms of like, if I had like a priority scale, in terms of like my cares and my worries, this would definitely be on the bottom of the pile. But because obviously my hearts go out to all the people that were harassed and had to deal with horrible things. Uh, but currently there are, I don't know how many World of Warcraft subscribers that are getting, kind of getting screwed in a sense where it's like, if you're paying for something every month, you're paying for that thing. You know what I mean? And mm. if nothing's getting updated. Nothing. People are people are walking out of Blizzard for good good reason. You know, and it's like uh, I don't know. Like, 
it's a, I feel bad for the people who are paying a subscription and who are watching their favorite game of all time die out. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's going to suck as well. Like, like I said, this is on the very bottom of my list of like worries and cares. But I do feel bad for the people that are watching their childhood game, for instance, die out in front of their eyes mm -hmm. in a pretty brutal way. Like it was dying out before the time because of, of popularity and like fixes that they weren't fixing. But now it's like really dying out, like just because of like the political climate as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I, f I do feel bad for those people, but I, it's yeah. I, I really hope that there's justice. That's the word I couldn't think of earlier. I hope that the people that were harassed, I hope that they get justice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hope that there's some well-deserved justice here because from some of the things that I've been reading, it's like, it's the kind of stuff that makes me think of like, the kind of like circles Donald Trump would be around in, mm -hmm. you know, when that's locker room talk, you know, ah, mm -hmm. you know, boys will be boys, locker room talk. I hate that kind of stuff, man. I hate it. Grinds my gears. You know, people making like half ass excuses for harassment. It's so stupid. Yeah. Um, all right. I think that's the last topic that I had. Do you have anything you want to talk? I've got a bunch of small things that okay. we can, I'll blow through real okay. quick. Um, one, like, well, to talk about what we were talking about earlier on, and this is, I'm actually glad that they, there's an article about this because I didn't understand this, but, uh, you like, maybe you noticed this as well, but have you noticed how there was no ray tracing or DLSS on the ascent? Yeah, like I heard about go, that. For the Game Pass yeah. version, they don't have it, but uh, they said they're fixing that. It's on that. Steam. It's on the Steam like, version, and they said they're yeah. going to fix... Also, loading times are longer on the Game Pass version. Mm. Uh, you know what? I think it's because of the Game Pass app itself. Yeah. It has to be. Possibly, but I mean, none of that's not really... I mean, the game still looks gorgeous, you know? Well, the game is great. Yeah, the, yeah, great, so. the game is great, like... I mean, so, I hope they fix it because you and I both have a rig that yes. can run this game on with ray tracing on, and the game would look beautiful with ray yeah. tracing. Game's still fun, but the cyberpunk world that they've built, like it would look so good with ray tracing. So uh, hopefully they fix that soon. But yeah, most likely uh, issues within the Game Pass launcher itself because I use a lot of third-party applications to do uh, video game optimization because mm -hmm. I hate spending like 30 minutes tweaking settings to find the right optimization for your game. I use a lot of third-party applications that optimize my games for me. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, it doesn't, it never picks up any of my Game Pass games. Because it like, the, I don't know, it's just different. I feel like the, the files are, are are stored somewhere else. or I'm not too sure what the system is, but only half the time are my games from Game Pass actually showing up in like my other digital libraries. They still work though, but keeping, keeping in mind, I believe Game Pass for PC is still in beta. Um, but yeah, yeah, so they're working on it. But um, yeah, currently, right now, if you do have Game Pass on PC and you want to play The Ascent, it's still going to look good and you're still going to have fun. But uh, currently, no DLSS or ray yeah. tracing. Um, this is exciting stuff. And maybe we can do like a first impression or review afterwards, which is that Battlefield uh, 2040, uh, 2042, uh, the story is going to be explained in a short film that's yeah. going to premiere on August 12th, like a full on, like epic short film. It looks cool. I'm looking forward to it. I like, like it when I like fun. when game companies yeah. do that. I they had a whole mini like web series, live action web series award? for Alan Wake. They had, I remember one of the other Tom Clancy uh, games had like this kind of short film as well. So didn't yeah didn't uh, one of these game companies win an Oscar recently for yes. something like this? Yes, but that was it was like a docu series. It was yeah. for uh, Medal of Honor Medal above and beyond. One, Medal of Honor, yeah. It was the VR version, yeah. and they had a section that had a documentary that talked about you know World War uh, Two and and just like interesting story. And so they won a uh, yeah Oscar, which is crazy to say. Yeah. Um. Uh, Stray, the sci-fi game about a lost cat that's finally coming out next year. I only bring that up because they released another trailer recently and it's been blowing up because, I mean, why wouldn't it? It's a game about a cat and it looks great and you get to be the cat. So, of course, it's going viral. Um, just thought that was quickly worth mentioning. Uh, let's see here. So, apparently, McDonald's tried to make a PS5 controller. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, and they were it. in talks with Sony to make it. And like the picture I'm seeing, I highly doubt was going to be the, the actual. I thought it was funny. I don't know who would buy that, yeah. but it looked funny. 
I would. I like, and not even like ironically. I would do it. I, I would buy it unironically because it's yeah. it's one of those things where in who maybe maybe twenty years from now it's going to be worth money. Who knows? Uh, you know, the McDonald's controller. But yeah, Sony. Uh, Sony had to put a stop to it, um, or like they didn't uh, collab with them, which makes sense because look, Sony doesn't like third party anything when it comes no. to hardware like they even though it's so easy for someone to make their own panels for the ps5 like custom made panels they yeah. will stop people from selling Jeez. those um they got to make their own and stuff like that um some news on dead space the dead space remake is being led by the assassin's creed valhalla game director hmm. um uh just thought that that was worth mentioning uh this isn't really gaming news but, but i kind of think it's i'm excited about it which is that there's going to be a flash there's going to be a new flash gordon movie dennis oh and it's going to be directing? filmed by taika waititi oh that's so interesting. it's going to be amazing it's going to be amazing there's no way there's no way taika messes this up i think it's the perfect type of movie for him to do yeah so it's going to be it's it's wacky going to be wacky outer oh, space yeah. adventure so I love yeah. it cuz well apparently originally the studio said let's do let's do it animated and he's like no we're going to we're doing it live action screw animated and I was like yeah that's what I want to hear yeah give me like I I feel like it's going to be very Thor Ragnarok esque you know what I mean yeah um this is something I would I'm so badly want to buy this Dennis but I don't I don't actually leave the house so what's the point um the Pokemon company recently developed well, they made the they made the the real life version of the of the the bicycle from Pokemon from the from the the old old Pokemon games and it, I'm gonna send it to you. It doesn't it looks stupid, but I would buy it. I would love it. Um, it actually looks like low key. I think it looks kind of sick. But yeah, they developed the original Pokemon bike. I'm not too sure how much it's gonna sell for. Um, but man, I like it. It looks it looks so sick. It actually, I really want to get this bicycle, but yeah, so they're doing that. Uh, this is a small news, but hey, because Final Fantasy XIV is so popular, I bring it up. Um, so in Final Fantasy, it's an MMO. There are many, many different uh, classes you can play. Uh, one of them being the Sage. Apparently, uh, I don't know if you know what uh, tripophobia is. Tri tri I, I, I might be wrong about this, but I believe tripophobia is... That thing of fear when you see things with little tiny holes on them, you know, mm -hmm. or little tiny dots or holes. I think that could be it. But uh, the the icon itself was uh, triggering people's uh, tripophobia, so they had to change that. Of course, they did simple change to make. It was nice enough to make them help that change. Um, also, apparently, Nintendo was going to be in the Olympics opening ceremony, but they pulled out. I, I yeah. can't imagine why they would have. Because uh, like the opening yeah, ceremony that. had so many so much video game music, yeah. Um, yeah, apparently five Nintendo tracks were removed from the ceremony. Um, Sounds like Nintendo. Yeah. Sounds like something Nintendo would do. It's, I just don't under. Use, I have such a weird thing about Nintendo, man, because it's like the games they make is so family friendly and family fun, but the company is very much like screw everybody else. Well, screw screw anybody who doesn't agree with us or agree with the things we want to do. Like the fact that they butchered the freaking Legend of Zelda movie that was supposed to happen years ago because someone leaked it, yeah. and it just got them. It got more hype, but they were like, "No, we can't trust you anymore. We're never gonna let it." Or the fact that someone someone literally created a better matchmaking system for I believe it was Super for Smash yeah. Bros Melee, which is an old game that you, they that they haven't re-released it. It's not like but they're still stopping people from playing that game. And yeah. it's such a huge competitive market. And like there are people developing like fan made things for their games and they're shutting them down. And it's like, they should be hiring these people, you yeah. know, but they're so old school, man. I yes. picture, I picture like the board of directors for Nintendo, just being a bunch of really, really old Japanese men talking about honor and things <laughs> that like, doesn't matter, you know, <laughs> like it doesn't matter. Like, Oh, Either they're sitting around doing that, or they're just talking about money and how they can milk milk the next generation of Nintendo kids. You know, yeah, well, I still uh, remember that one article about how Microsoft came in and they wanted to uh, buy Nintendo, and Nintendo laughed them out of the room. Yeah, yeah, man. I just I don't know. The Nintendo, like I said, I love their games, love, love, love their games. But I just, as a company, I feel a bit iffy about them. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, the, this is. 
this is so odd that I had to bring it up, and it's odd news for me or any Final Fantasy fan, which my favorite Final Fantasy game of all time, Dennis, was Final Fantasy X. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I remember, I remember, I remember it fondly. It's also a game that I actually play and finish at least once a year. Um, so I play and finish it at least once a year, but apparently the main character, Titus, who is a Blitzball player in the game, Blitzball being something, it's like soccer meets polo but it's all underwater and it's it's weird anyways um he was apparently supposed to originally be a plumber huh which is like not exactly like something you'd expect from the protagonist of a final fantasy game you know <laughs> like oh his humble origin is that he was a plumber uh instead his origin is that he was a superstar blitzball player he was basically the freaking cristiano ronaldo of Blitzball and everybody knew him. He was like an icon, which gave him this ego, gave him this like chip on his shoulder, even though he had daddy issues. It worked with the character. I cannot fathom what that game would have been like if he was a freak if he was a freaking plumber. Like <laughs> I don't know. Like he like how are you gonna be egotistical as a plumber? I don't know. Uh not shitting on plumbers, it's actually uh it's a good job. It's a good trade job and you'll always be needed. But yeah. Uh, so that was weird. I, th I felt like I had to bring that up. Um, and then, yeah, like nothing else that was big that was worth talking about. You know, like, I mean, I guess if, if, if you care, Ariana Grande is coming to Fortnite. If, I don't think a lot of people in our... I don't think the people who watch this care about that, though. No. Don't think so. Um, is that it? Yeah. That is about it. Yeah, that's about it. Cool. I want to get, I want to start playing some co-op of the set with you after this. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, guys. So that's it for this episode. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Revog. Follow us on Twitter at Revog Games. You can follow me on Twitter at ThinkHero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And Josh, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitch at Josh underscore Toki, or you guys can find me on TikTok at Josh.Toki. Cool. All right. Until next week, we'll see you guys later. Later.